the message of art can help promote the very things that we're trying to do to further environmental sustainability in our community and do our part in protecting uh, the climate for the future generations. How much do we care about uh, how rich we are relative to the diversity of culture and nat nature as a legacy that we leave to our children and grandchildren? Those are value issues. And we guys in the left brain, we're not so good at that. And one of the things that's so important is to bring in the fusion that you're doing here tonight. Because what art can help to do, not just with our right brain, can it help to tell us from our reaction to how the artist prevent, presents things as to what really are our gut check values. There is this discussion going around the world about climate change. And I've seen this discussion, I've heard it several years ago, and I never thought the discussion was going the way the scientists, the educators, wanted it to go. And I've always thought something, it is a difficult topic, because just take the word climate, okay? You know, I bet there's a billion people in the world that have to go to a dictionary to determine the difference between the word climate and weather, okay? Those two things are different. Weather is a very short-term thing. Climate is a long-term thing, okay? And so the scientists and the educators are stuck with, with a word that the masses do not understand. And then there's this thing called change. Well, change can be positive, change can be bad, change can be opportunities, change can be a lot of things. It's sort of meaningless. And then there are people who just can't or won't look out 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years where they're so busy that they don't have time to do this. So. This discussion about climate change has never been good. And if you read the New York Times about a month ago and the Chronicle, I think, yesterday, the discussion has been getting worse. Less and less people in Britain, Germany, the United States are worried about climate change, okay? And if they're not worried and they increasingly get less worried, how can we have a positive discussion of something that's also extremely important? How to effectively make the transition from fossil energy to clean, renewable energy? If you can't think clearly about the threat of climate change and how to mitigate it, how are you going to go to the next step of doing anything about it? So, in my little simple view of things is we have a problem with this discussion. The scientists and educators are all we have for having a basis for thinking clearly about it. They are like Einstein when he was trying to discover his three great theorems. He looked at the only thing that was solid and firm that he could stand on to sort out the world, and that was the speed of light. All we have for having a basis of having a, a good, informed discussion about climate change is what the scientists and the engineers and educators are giving us, and, it's, and they're doing a good job, but it's not working. So I have two strategies for assisting them. The media center knows I have an extensive background in television. And they want me to make a documentary. And they know I have a great passion for art. And they know Arabella has challenged me to make five great paintings, great, excuse me, extraordinary paintings for an art exhibition called Climate Change. So I got that over here. And, and to me, this art exhibition is a resource. And, and now 
I've been presented with the challenge to make a documentary. And I said to myself, how can I make a documentary that can really have an impact on the discussion? And, and how can I help the great scientists, the educators, the folks up at the pa California Academy of Science, how can I help them have a voice? And I said, well, I know a bit about storylines. Why don't we make a storyline called, a documentary called Painting to Change the World? And when I paint and when Arabella paints, we both think a lot. And sometimes, God, you wouldn't be surprised how much artists think when they're trying to make paintings that are what we call content paintings. You know, you think about population one moment, you think about something else the other moment. And so we're making this documentary where we think out loud, and when we think out loud, somebody like the great Paul Ehrlich comes in and answers it. When I think about the role of, for example, the sun, I think about what I've learned from Tony Seba. So we are making this documentary to help, we call them partners, the experts who have things to say, to give them a voice. And then, we always have to do something that's unique. Okay, right now is the time we have to make an impact on the discussion. Not two or three years ago. And by the way, when anyone goes out to write a book, make a research project, make a television show, whatever, most of them never even finish. Or when they finish, it's two, three years from now. So we decided to make a documentary that has immediate impact. And here's the way we do it. We tape a, section, a segment with, let's say, Steve or Paul Ehrlich or somebody else. Within 48 hours after we make that taping, we release across the world that segment, okay? And the releasing of that segment has an impact on the public because there are people watching it. And we have a diagram that I would appreciate uh, if it could come up. And I just want to mention the network we're building. And it's one thing to get videos and audios out into the marketplace. And my dear assistant, Michael Ruscia, why don't you tell us what, very quickly, though, what are we doing with internet, radio, local television access? And you got to go fast because they're giving me signals. All right, sure. Every show that goes out, immediately we strip the audio and send it to go to internet radio. Um, beyond that, the broadcast here, the media center, and the sister station in San Jose, we also upload it to what's called PEG Media, which is sort of a hybrid. <clears throat> we upload it, and stations just like this one all across the nation can download it and broadcast it through their networks. And then there's the internet, where we have what's called Blip TV, which not only hosts, but also distributes our videos to over 21 different locations, 11 of which we have configured right now. Things like VodPod, Vimeo, Blinks, you may have not have heard of them, but each one of these already has hundreds of views. Um, they're put up on killin.com, you can get them on YouTube, and also Facebook is another great outlet that lets anyone participate who has a profile by just simply clicking like when they